Pearly opened on Broadway in 1970. <laughs> we didn't do this on purpose, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> it's happy. <clears throat> During a dry season for musicals that included Applause, Coco, and Not Another Hit, unless you include O oh, Calcutta. Which we kind of don't. Um, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, we do. I don't know. Um, at any rate, <laughs> Oh. At any rate, um, this dry season allowed Pearly to get plenty of attention. Um, it was a really odd musical, I don't know any other that followed this path, because it was an adaptation of a 1961 play, Pearly Victorious. Um, Philip Rose had produced the straight play, um, Pearly Victorious, by Ossie Davis, um, and because he believed the original play deserved a longer run, he convinced Davis to turn the show into a musical. Um, so the musical version was essentially a revival of the play, but with the added score of a musical, and it even had the same set and costume designers. Isn't that crazy? That's so uh, weird. The show was about a southern black creature named Pearly who defeats a white racist landlord known as Old Captain. The show, was point the show pointed a finger at racial segregation and with its exaggerated and exploding racist cliches sought to laugh it out of existence. Uh, Pearly's love interest, Ludie Bell, was played by Melba Moore. Yeah. Um, and the show made her a star. Watch the transformation. <laughs> Um, she got to sing the adoring title song, which was very unique um, for the 60s and 70s because unlike many production number title songs from that time, the song was written from her own unique perspective and she got to sing it alone on stage. Here to sing Pearly from Pearly is Badia Farah. Why he can't 